to begin. It has been a joy watching all of you transform. I wear the butterfly tonight. Well, that is what all of you are. I've watched you be the caterpillar, hatched from the egg, consuming, looking, growing. Can't wait to experience this or that or read this or try that class. You see the joy in your eyes when everything's new. You explore, leaving your nest at safety of the treetops to go explore, to find new things to munch on. Yes? And then that change, that turn, <clears throat> where you've heard this or that, where you've read the books, you've taken the classes, and it's just not satisfying anymore. You've done the relationships, you've done the jobs. Something's amiss. Something's different. But what is it? You point the fingers, you struggle, you look, trying to figure out what it is, what needs to change, till one day you realize, it's me. I need to change. And you crawl into that chrysalis. You crawl into that womb, and you change. You make the decision to look in all the dark corners of yourself. As the beloved Baron would say, you'd go in and find your skeleton and you would have a boogie. You would have a dance. <laughs> Some of you have gotten quite good at the tango. You took it to heart. You found all those dark points of yourself and you began to love them and change them. For many of you, you had to dissolve yourself into pieces. Because it's not a pretty picture what that butterfly does inside that little chrysalis. All the parts that they used before has to be dissolved and grown anew. So a butterfly looks very different than a caterpillar, does it not? I see very different people sitting here. Groups have changed. People have come and gone. The change is beautiful. Now we're at the point where we're cracking out of our shell. We're moving on, we're changing, and we're spreading our wings. Honor yourself in that process. Honor where you have come from. It has been a long journey, but you're here, alive and transformed. Even if you're just pushing out of that dark place, and joining the world in light again, or you're spreading those wings and taking that first flight with your new wings. You're all butterflies, my loves. You're all transformed. Why is it important to fly? Well, we can't be the caterpillar all for all time, can we? We get tired of consuming. Is your world nothing but consuming, consuming? has been for a long time. And we're realizing we can't be that anymore. We can't be the greedy caterpillars anymore. When you have your tent caterpillars, I know you get in this area. What do they do to a tree? They strip it down to just bark. Hmm? Nature has a balance. Luckily enough, although we have tried to separate ourselves from nature, so let's face it, we had candles in here. It would be lovely, but it would be still a little dark, wouldn't it? We'd probably do these ceremonies a lot earlier, yes? Or we'd be out in the woods with a big bonfire. And I think some of you would probably be naked running around. Too. <laughs> we may have gotten out of the jungle, the woods, to live where we live, but we're still part of nature. And luckily for us, we felt that balance. We felt that nudge. We are remembering our mother, Mother Earth. Because we need to transform, we need to change. Why is this important? Let me give you a little clue. I'm so proud because as any good mother, you watch from your baby grow into that young adult as they become. And your planet, you are becoming that. You're the adolescent. 
where divine, as I've said in past years, can give you the car keys, and we all watch nervously to see what happens. Hmm? You wonder what this awakening is. You've got the car keys. We're all holding our breath. You've been given the car keys. What does that really mean? You know what's about actually giving you more information, more secrets and things are coming on the planet? Because you're ready. You are a grand experiment. Experiment. The universe wanted to take that high vibration. Why aren't your angels physically walking amongst you? It's because they're so high vibration, it is hard for them to be in a physical form. So they decided to shed their wings and walk in the planet and try to bring the heavens onto earth. You, my dears, are the angels who came to the planet to bring the heavens down here. This is what Mother Earth agreed to many, many millennia ago. Because in doing so, giving you a form, she could change hers. This is what is happening on your planet. The awakening is you remembering who and what you are. This vast being of love and light. We don't go and seek God anymore. God's right here. Divine's right here. You're awakening to realize you are divine. You've never lost that connection. It's right here. You don't need to leave the planet. You don't need to wait for the mothership. There's no Kool-Aid to drink tonight. Too bad. <laughs> You were asked to come here to bring that energy, love, here on the planet. For Mother Earth and for all of you. And it's time to reclaim your birthright. To reclaim that energy that's always been you. When we feel like we don't deserve something, what happens after time? Let's say we had a big pile of money in the middle of the room. But you feel like you don't deserve it. You don't deserve that money. You don't deserve that wealth. And over time, you ignore it. It becomes invisible. Until one day, someone says, Hey, what's up with the big pile of money in the middle? Is anybody going to use that? I could use it. Would you like some? Here, it starts passing it out. That's what's happening. Your wealth of your spirit has all of a sudden been illuminated in the middle of the room. And it's your choice now to take that love, that energy, that light back inside of yourself. It's still there. Actually, what's really happening is you're taking your blinders off. You notice I take hers off. Her reality filters, I call them, her glasses, yes? I can see all of you. And you know what I see? I see light. I see wings of angels sitting here. Remembering who they are. Remembering how powerful they are. Remembering that they're co-creating with divine and can dream and build any world they want. How many of you would like to change the world? Yes. Would you like to have a different world growing up later? Oh, you bet. Long time ago, and some of you remember this, I loved President Bush. I called him the burning bush. <laughs> Boy, did he burn. He burned us, he burned everything, and he made it all illuminated. He was so wonderful. You know why? There's a little fire underneath all of you. Because now you're not just ignoring the government middle. You're not ignoring what's going on in your community, in your world. You want to know. That's why truth is coming out. Because you want to know. Your internet is such a blessing. And a curse for some. But a blessing. Can news be hidden? What do you all carry in your purses and in your back pockets right now that Raven made you turn off? Yes, computers, cameras, information, 
energy. It captures and records, as this one's recording right now. Hello, everyone around the world. <laughs> Connecting to everyone. That truth is coming out. Those hidden things in the middle of the room are being revealed. What you need to ask yourself is, what haven't you been noticing? What has been hidden from you? You've been reflecting these years, going deeper, as I said, dancing with those skeletons in the closet. How many of you have had those emotional and reflective, seeing those patterns and parts of you that you needed to change? Yes? Oh, everybody should have the hand up. <laughs> That's the energy on the planet, my loves. As you dance that spiral and you get to the middle, you go through things you have done before. You're not failures. You're not doing anything wrong. When that thing that you thought you solved a long time ago, or that ugly pattern that you thought change came back, it's not coming back to taunt you. You didn't bring it back in. But in a circle, you pass it. You reflect on it. Go, oh yes, I remember that. Yes, we did that already. I'm good. And it comes back around again. And go, oh yeah, whatever. And finally, we're done, yes? We're not trying to taunt you or torture you. You giggle, yes. I know it does feel like a taunting sometimes. <laughs> but those lessons come back around so that you can be done. The reflecting that you have been doing has bringing you to a place of completion. Didn't we talk about this last year? If you have something on your hand and you pick at it, what happens? You bleed. Trust me, if you pick deep enough at your body, you are going to find a skeleton. Mm -hmm. It's what holds you up. <laughs> you have been in the last many years picking yourself apart, finding all those pieces. Be done. Let your wounds heal. The blood's better inside the body than out. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Let yourself recover, heal. Stop picking yourself apart. It is so important right now. As I said, each of you is bringing forth this new dream. Is this dream of the future? Or is this a dream of what you have already done? Each time you get stuck in the past, each time you torture yourself over what you have done or not done in the past, brings that dream, that image back to the past. And aren't we done? We're done. We always come full circle with things. But there's a time to get off the merry-go-round and get on to the new greater circle, yes? Yes? Music ends, but the dance continues. You choose where you want to dance. You don't have to repeat the relationships you've had before. You don't have to repeat the same bad job. You don't have to repeat the same struggle. You can change. Yes, life can change. How can you change it? I hear it. How can I change it, Mother? How can I change it? By accepting it. When we ignore it and make it invisible, it's easy to suffer and be in it for a long time. When we accept it and know it's part of our life, then we can change it. How many of here have revealed something that you did not want to see and had to change. It's touched all of us. I remember that force of change can be so terrifying. That over 2,000 years ago, a new dream world that you are creating right now. The sun that I would bring through would bring a shift, a change on the planet. And not just my sun, but many 
beings, ambassadors of love, forgiveness, and light would come on the planet. And through their wisdom and teachings, the world would shift, that the suffering would end, and that light and illumination would come again. I've waited over 2,000 years. That dream, to hold that dream, to hold that dream in me was terrifying. But I knew in my heart that I'd be taken care of, that my husband would be taken care of, that my family, this baby within me, would be taken care of. It was the promise that my guide, Gabriel, yes, Archangel Gabriel was my angelic guide, would come to me often in dreams, in a blaze of light at the end of the bed that finally convinced Joseph that, yes, something was going to happen. <laughs> that we would be okay, we would be taken care of, and that no matter where we went, community would be there to help us. But I was asked to hold that dream. At first I thought it was to hold this baby, but I realized it was not just Yahshua, Jesus. It was the dream of the new world. It was planting the seeds. And that is what Jesus and Buddha and many of them, even Muhammad, brought. They planted the seeds. The world that you're living now. It's easy to fall into the trap of fear. We need to stop fighting fear. God made all of our parts, and fear is part of you. Why do you hate fear so much? We let fear rule us, that reaction. And that is what you see in our beloved Donald Trump. He is the embodiment of fear fear, and reaction. How many of you saw his video with the eagle? No, it was awesome. <laughs> that was so awesome. Something to look at. Even Mother Earth, even sacred beings or a sea past his mask he wears. And the eagle would have nothing to do with him. And he cowered in fear and held his wig to make sure the eagle wouldn't snatch it off his head. How wonderful he is being in illuminating this fear. And all those that celebrate him, they are celebrating that fear too. Love him. He is being an embodiment of that so that you get frustrated and point the finger at him. Remember, three come back at you. What fear are you reacting with? What part of you are you not looking at in yourself? Hmm? Fear, as I said, is part of us. God gave it to us. Fear is that part of you that keeps you from getting on the roof and playing Superman or Superwoman. Because we have a fear of what? Falling. Falling. Gravity. Pain. Pain. Yes, that's a good motivator. So pain really is your safety coordinator. <laughs> we all have the safety official at work that makes sure you're wearing a hard hat and your steel boots and following safety protocol. Yes, that's what fear's job is. Oh, you think you're a big shot and can make that big speech. Well, I'm going to be sure to give you a fear of public speaking. There we go. That'll keep you from making a fool of yourself. Now, does that serve you? If you have a big math test and you're afraid of math, are you going to do real good on the math test? Probably not. So, sometimes fear needs to be reminded that it is part of the team. But it doesn't get to be in charge. Fear has its place. It helps us to look at 
what we're doing. Because all of you are charging ahead in life so quickly. We would pray for rain or pray for healing or pray for a good harvest and it would come 10, 20 years later. You pray and it comes tomorrow. Pray for a meal and there's a TV ad for some lovely morsel to go buy at the store and you go get it. You instantly manifest what you pray about. That's scary. That gives a lot of fuel for that fear to be afraid for you for. Hmm? But how do we change that? Raven had a beautiful gentleman that came to her. He had tried everything. He was so afraid of flying because when he was young, his brothers threw him off the porch, the uh, high deck, and he broke his arm. So he was afraid of flying. But his mother was ill soon to pass and to get there quickly he'd had to take a flight and so he came and he sat with me and I told him instead of fighting the fear let's have a slice of cheesecake and a cup of coffee and have a conversation we talked to his fear we asked him why it was so afraid it said he was afraid of being hurt again so we explained to him that flying in a 747 is quite safe nowadays know about the person scanning you, TSA, but the plane experience is actually quite pleasant, that he could get there quickly. And the fear said, but wait, can you guarantee? Well, no. There's always variables in life. But you are meant to get to your mother. And if your will and desire is there, you will get to your mother. And the fear said, okay, I can take a break. And that's what a fear does. It's like a door. It keeps you on one side of the door until you're ready. Until you say to that fear, thank you. Thank you for protecting me all those years. I never climbed up on the roof. I never went flying. I never did all this. But now I'm ready. I don't need you to do that anymore for me. And so the fear then goes out to the outside, to the outer edge. That's a different fear. That fear can then evolve into, am I donating millions of dollars to the right charitable trust? I'd like to be to that place with that fear. How about you? Yes? Yes. Yes. So the fear that's afraid of buying the $6 pair of socks, that's not appropriate. I think we all can afford $6 for socks, yes? So we can tell that fear, you know what? I'm good. I can balance my checkbook. I can do this. I need you to go out to the outer levels, to the next stage. And then you expand. This process is expansion of consciousness. And the doorkeeper is fear. It is time that we stop punishing ourselves. That we stop beating ourselves up for being afraid. We're afraid until we know, until we experience, and until we love. When we love ourselves, we allow ourselves to be afraid. This is new. This is exciting. I'm afraid, but I'm okay. I know it in my heart. Nothing is going to harm this. Yes, your body can change. You can have surgery. You can have organs removed. This one knows. But she's still here, alive. That doesn't change the spirit within. You have experiences. It helps you to grow. That's why you came down in the bodies to experience both pleasure and pain. And that can be a scary process. But it's time to let that fear know it's not in charge anymore. It can't barricade the door anymore. It's time for us to hatch out of the chrysalis, to walk through the door. My faith kept me going. When I was pregnant and ready to pop, 
with Joseph asleep on the donkey, walking across the desert, because I knew, I knew the next town, that was where we needed to go. And we went from inn to inn, because it was Ramadan, and it was so busy, there was no place to stay. It was holiday. And the only place that Joseph could find was a friend of his who had a stable in the back. It was actually not as dirty as people think. It was quite lovely. And we weren't alone. We were met by many people all celebrating in Ramadan in a group of travelers that came to us. I don't wonder about the whole three wise men. More like 30. There were many. And they weren't just from uh, Persia. They were from Tibet, from China. Because they knew who was coming forth. And he would need help. My beloved baby. He was so sick. And it was all the training that I had had from my grandmother, who he would call shaman, that helped him to live, to be a beautiful boy of 12. And these beautiful beings that came at my birth to give me those herbs, that frankincense to heal him, that myrrh to heal him, and that gold for us to be able to get through, to honor the gift, to buy the things we need. So they came when he was older to help him heal even more. And even with him sick with fever, with his lung collapsed, imagine that. There is no hospital. There is none of that. With his lung collapsed, with kidney stones, and everything else he had at 10 years old, I knew everything was going to be afraid. Okay. Was I afraid? Was fear there? Yes. I prayed and prayed. But I knew in my heart everything was going to be okay. And when I stilled myself, Gabriel spoke to me and reminded me that he held my hand every night. We hear you cry out. We hear you when you're afraid. We are here, all of us angels and guides. We hold your hand. And when you're still in night, you can feel us. Our hands on your faces, holding your hands, holding you, giving you that hug. Just in my time of need, the light, the guidance was there. In your time of need now, we're here. Listen for us. We're there every day, helping you through this darkness, helping you to that illumination, helping you to that new dream. And as that old energy fights, as that lovely Mr. Trump bees the fear and toots his horn, love yourself, love that. That fear in you is changing. I ask each of you, as Raven said, it's important that you don't dwell on the past, that you keep orientating yourself to the future of moving forward. You're not stuck in your past. You choose to be stuck in your past. It's time to go into the future, to birth it, to bring it forward. Accept who and what you are, where you came from, Thank it, forgive it, and move toward what you want to create, what you desire in this world. So for 2016, I ask each of you, what do you desire? What do you desire to create? What's your next step? Hmm. Everybody think about it. What do you desire? What is your next step? If you're the butterfly flying free, what is it that you want to create in your life on this planet? Anybody? Shout it out. 
love and life community, to bring together like-minded folks. Yes? Yes, beautiful. What else? Don't be shy. Come on. <coughs> Happiness. Happiness. Wonderful. Definitely need more of that on the planet. Happiness. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Passion. The fire in our soul to do what we want to do without restraint. Yes? Partnership. Partnership. Wonderful. Someone by your side to hold your hand to share all the secrets of the universe in the middle of the night. What else? How about health? Yes, some of you have health. shifted the health. Health and wellness and a joyful celebration of life. Yes, mm -hmm. to enjoy this beautiful temple that Mother Earth has given you and to live in it with balance. That's a lovely, lovely brow. What else? Travel. Travel, yes. To see all parts of Mother Earth and the peoples that live there. What else? Freedom. Freedom. Mm, spread your wings. Good. To be who you are. Have a creativity, yes? Mm -hmm. To allow that creativity and all the different ways to create. What else? Prosperity. Yes, there we go. For wealth and prosperity to be taken care of so that you can travel, so that you can be creative and have that partner and be taken care of. What's happening in the middle of the room right now? We're building on this. Yes! <laughs> It's revealing. All these things we're talking about are things that we desire, but we ignore it. We don't see it. It is the big pile in the middle that you haven't been allowing yourself. Your creators. Create it. And allow it to come into you. Accept it. Grow it. Be it. One step at a time. Or maybe 20 or 30 steps. Some of you are quite fast. <laughs> Good. So 2016, that energy coming next year. We even looked it up on the phone. Is the fire monkey. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Lots of joy. Lots of freedom. Lots of creativity. Lots of flinging and poo. <laughs> it is that going to be that kind of a year it is another physical year fire is there which is good you all need that passion that fire and for some of you that drive your life force your being comes from fire it is going to be a very creative year for you to explore to create to be passionate about life explore don't hold yourself back allow that creation to flow and that creation energy is not just in designing a beautiful painting or stringing some beads or making a baby. It's also creating all that you desire. That big pile in the middle. Dream big, my loves. Allow yourself to see what you have been denying yourself. And start putting into motion that dream so that it can become reality. All the work that you have done in the last eight years culminates next year. You are all birthing that new dream. You're physically bringing it onto the planet. What you think about and pray about, you're going to create. If you have stinky thinking, what are you going to make? Mess. Big, big, stinky mess. Yes. Is it a masculine or feminine year next year? Masculine. Masculine, male monkey energy. Got to balance all the, all the female energy. Mm. So know that those thoughts, it's okay to have stinky thoughts from time to time. You all pass gas, it's okay. 
We had a love of goats. We loved our goats in my time and age. They stunk. We loved them, but they stunk. It stunk at the one end and the other end, and all pretty much all over. <laughs> but we still loved them for the beautiful beings that they were. Love yourself for your stinkiness and all of it. And when you catch yourself and catch a whiff, oh, that's quite stinky. Know that you can clear that. Okay, yes, you know what? That's just not serving me, brain. That's stinky thinking. I need to refocus on what it is I desire. And it's okay if you don't know everything that you want to desire or manifest. You're still changing. Make it simple. I want to live life with ease and grace. I want all of life around me to be full of ease and grace. You know what you're healing from the other side? Okay. It's time to allow yourself to have that, to bring it through, to manifest it in your life. And you are the conduits, you are the keys. So I even said in the beginning, it's not just you sitting here. You represent your community. As Jesus came back and built his community, He didn't go and put up flyers. He didn't pay people off to come follow him around for an entourage or throw a rock concert. He was just himself. His light and love was infectious. People would just look at him and drop everything. They would drop their hoe from the farm, from the fields, and follow him. They would stop their fishing to come listen to him. Why? Because they needed to remember the light. They needed to hear those seeds of wisdom that he was planting. And as he grew that community, as they came to hear his seeds of wisdom, It was not him, but them, the people that came, the community that he grew, that grew that light. They were the word, not him. They were. It was their insights. It was their understanding of the simple stories that he shared. It was their experiences that they could reflect on with his words and find the wisdom in there to let go of their pain. They were the word. They were the wisdom. And it was through them that they grew the community. That's what each of you are doing. You are bringing your wisdom and light and changing the community, changing the world, creating a community of love and light. Each of you. So tonight, as you receive your blessing for you to light your light, you will light the light. You will light a light of the community. And together, you will illuminate the world. And when you go home to your friends, your family, you will light their lights too. And I encourage you for this holiday season, for you for solstice, for Hanukkah, for it has always, always been a celebration of light. I encourage you to light a light, to light a candle, to turn on your lights and celebrate the return of the light, because that has returned. Daybreak is here. And that world of illumination has rooted in. This next year, as a physical year, means that there's more physical changes for all of you. I know, go ahead and groan. (laughs) This year has been a physical year. For many of you, it is then transforming that butterfly into that new bee. This has been a difficult year for many of you. A lot of challenges. But next year is now the culmination, the rearranging and that promise of ease and grace. To do this, you need balance. I like what Raven posts sometimes on Facebook. I look 
over her shoulder to see what she's writing or what she's posting. That you can eat a healthy salad and then have 20 tacos and some margaritas. It's called balance. <laughs> I like that one. Everything in balance. You cannot be the rock star guru and you can't be the martyr that takes no responsibility for nothing. That everyone else does it and I'm lowly and nothing. That is not balance. You need both. You need health. You need wellness. But you need fun. And if fun means eating chocolate, then have some fun. You're in your bodies to live it, to love it, to enjoy it. Find balance in all that you do. It will make your integration, being here on the planet, easier and more enjoyable. So as you jump into the fire monkey next year, be sure you don't burn yourself. Be sure you have balance. Any questions? So as we transition, this energy right now is asking us to be quiet. Integrate. How many of you want to crawl under the covers for a winter break and just take a break? Be the bear, yes? Be the bear right now. Integrate. Be in the cave. Be quiet. Since 2011, we have been shifting and expanding, expanding our energy. On 11-11 of this year, you touched ground. I mean, we landed on the planet like Neil Armstrong? Yes, sort of. We are finally bringing all that high energy onto the planet. You need to be here to ground. How many of you are shocking yourself all the time? Hmm? That's your electrical systems trying to rebalance. And you're not grounded, so you need to ground. So putting your feet on the ground, or like what Raven instructed at the beginning to get a hug from Mother Earth, is so important. You need to wait for big projects to start next year, not until after February 8th, which is the um, Chinese New Year, okay? We're in a holding pattern right now to integrate. You need to integrate all the changes that are happening. And you don't need to know all the changes that are happening. You just need to trust that that's what needs to happen, yes? After the beginning of the year, after the New Year's are in place and spring comes back around, a uh, rush of energy and creativity. So get out those projects, those paintings, those beads, that photography, that exploring. It's time to have fun. Come out of the cave and bring new into your life. For some of you, that means travel, yes? For some of you, that means expansion, fun. But the big part of next year is community. You need to do it with people. We need to build the community again. A lot of you are tired of trying to struggle and do this alone. To find other like-minded people to talk to. And I'm weaving you all together. It's time to commute. Ooh, I like that word. Commute. Commune. Commute and commune, yes? Your language is so interesting. All the words, yes? To commute to commune, to bring together, yes? To travel, to be. Sometimes that traveling is far, sometimes it's close. Sometimes it's uh, your internet, your phone, yes? Reach out, touch someone, yes? As you connect and share your wisdom, your stories, your travels, your journey, you connect heart to heart. Your community grows, and it's begun to become important. You've looked in yourself a long time, and you'll continue to look there. But now, next year's energy has you look outside of yourself. Who do I surround myself with? Who do I spend time with? Is that in the best alignment for me? As we continue, the joyous sun of summer solstice returns, a lot of joy and celebration. About a big shift of energy. Okay, so summer solstice is going to be 
a good time to lay on the beach and just catch your breath. Yes? We have a big shift there at summer solstice. And just after that, as we get into the fall time, just like this year, for a lot of you, that is when the proverbial who hit the fat. It's going to be a monkey year, so expect some more poo float throwing, but not the same. For many of you, that's just that balance, a shift, okay? So another big integration. So for lots of people, that will be if they're resisting balance and resisting being here on the planet, that will be difficulty. For those of you that have been going through changes, you'll be there to guide them. That's why we need you out in the community. You are the lights. You help them find their way. So be the elder and claim your robes and be it, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> Grown. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, yes? That, when we hear that, to be the elder, to certain that wisdom, to be that voice, we groan. Because we think we have all these burdens and responsibilities. No. We're just asking you to be you. To share from the heart. That's it. To be. The strings attached to that is what you perceive. But it's not there. Because you're not alone. It's not you. It's divine working through you. The hollow bone. So allow yourself to be that conduit, that inner mat to divine. Ooh, I like that. You're all wireless devices for divine. Refuse to be silent. <laughs> Turn your music up loud and broadcast it. Yes? As we get into next year and Christmas and we end next year, a huge shift is coming the birthing, the completion. Just in time right after your election of whoever's going to be on that presidential stand. This one's already vowed, and our son has already asked. Yes, your son asked that if Donald Trump became president, could you please move to New Zealand? <laughs> I thought that was quite nice. Hmm? <laughs> Whoever's there, know and trust that it will illuminate exactly what needs to be illuminated that we are helping. You're not falling into darkness. You're done. You're moving toward light. Be that light, my loves. We will be there next year for you, weaving you in. Ground yourself and fall in love with your body. Fall in love with your earth. Fall in love with why you came here. Because you are coming to completion. You're coming full circle to that agreement of why you shed your wings and came down here on the planet in the first place. That means you get a reprieve. You get a new body and you get your wings back. For many of you, you found your wings. You're remembering who and what you are. And you get to walk forward next year proudly with those wings. I'm proud of each of you been a crazy journey, but we're walking out of the woods together into the light. Many blessings to all of you, my dears, in this new year, in your transformation. All my love to you. Namaste. Namaste.